You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast, and this is show number 211 for Sunday the 27th of May 2018. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my good friend Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. We are a pair of UK girls who are absolutely besotted with anything and everything Disney. Join us as we travel around all the Disney theme parks and we get the opportunity to chat to fans just like you to share their Disney fandom with them. If you want to communicate with us, you can contact us on email info at DisneyDreamGirls.com. You can tweet us at DisDreamGirls. We have an Instagram page Disney underscore dream underscore girls and pop on over to Facebook, search for Disney Dream Girls and give our page a like and join in some of the fun things we get up to over there. Without further ado, I would now like to begin this episode of the Disney Dream Girls. Hello people and welcome to this day in Disney history. Let's get this started shall we? You know, let's get along and start moving into this episode of This Week in Disney History which I've said twice now. Starting with the 27th of May in 1911 and the actor and writer Vincent Price was born. Many love him for voicing Rattigan in The Great Mouse Detective whilst Phantom Manor fans love him for being the original narrator of the Disneyland Paris classic attraction. Sadly, all that is left of his voice over is his laughter, and long may it continue. We will know if it has survived the refurbishment later this year. Moving to this day in 1977, Disneyland held a grand opening for Space Mountain. This opened two years after the Walt Disney World version. Now onward to the 28th of May 1960, and staying in Disneyland, the mine train through nature's wonderland opened in Frontierland. This was an e-ticket attraction that improved on the Rainbow Cavern's mine train. Keeping with the theme of opening attractions, and in 1966, It's a Small World opened in, in Disneyland's Fantasyland. The attraction had just come from the World's Fair and featured 297 animated children, 256 toys, and guests enjoyed a pleasant boat ride whilst hearing the famous song written by the Sherman songwriters. My, my, my vocal cords are actually feeling really sore. Like, I try speaking and it's just like, ugh. Hop, skip and jump to the 29th of May 2008 and on this day it was announced that Buzz Lightyear will fulfill his destiny and visit space as part of Dis- Discovery's STS-124 mission. Finally, to the 30th of May 1908, and Mel Blanc was born in San Francisco, California. Do you know where he can still be heard in a Disney film or attraction? Yes, you are right. It is in the Carousel of Progress as a voice of Cousin Orville. And that's all for this week in Disney, Disney history. Thanks for that, Kieran. And my bad, I didn't even manage to squeeze in any Snow White reference this week. Oh dear, we all know what that means. Gonna be double next week. Here's a little clue about what today's show's all about. with me my wonderful good friend Becky Mannion who loves to talk about her Disney travels and this week it's got a little bit of a sailing theme and we are going to chat about a plethora of topics but of course it'll be Disney because it's us and it's the lovely Becky so hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls once more. Hi I'm back. You are back my lovely and as always we love it when you are. Thank you. You've been away on holiday again. Maybe, just a small one. Yes, I have, I have. So spill the beans. What's the trip you've just come back from? So last week I returned from 15 nights holiday. We did six days in Walt Disney World. We did a three-day cruise and then went back to Walt Disney World for, I think, another five days and then 
Ooh. It was sadly home time. That makes a nice crew sandwich. It really did. It felt much nicer. It felt like two separate holidays. Mm, because you have like a Disney bit, then you have the cruisy bit, then you have the Disney bit. So I'd imagine it, it feels like it just was never going to end. I know. It's obviously like we were there for the first few days and I was still like, oh my God, we got the cruise. Then when we got off the cruise, it was still like we got five whole days of Disney still. Where the other cruises i have been, I'd only do, had two spare days after and it felt really like the holiday was over already. So this trip was a trip with the family, which consists of your parents, your sister, sister's baby, yeah? Uh, yeah, and then her partner. Fantastic. So there was quite a big group. Yep. So where did you all stay? We had a two-bedroom villa at Saratoga Springs because it actually works out better money-wise having one of them than, say, two standard rooms. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar with the layout, but basically you go in and there's the front room and a kitchen bit and a big fridge, which is where I stayed in the pull-out sofa bed. And then to the left of that is the big main room with a whole massive jacuzzi bath and a bathroom, which is where my mum and dad stayed. Then if you walk further along, go past where I was staying to the other end, is another whole bedroom and another separate bathroom again, which is where my sister and her family all stayed. We all kind of had our own separate parts again still, but we're all still together. Sounds familiar to me, a bit like old Key West layout with with their one bedrooms with the big sort of open space and the bed settee. Yeah, we've stayed there before, but there I think there was five of us that time and that was just a one bedroom. But this was the two beds, it just feels that bit bigger. What's it like as a resort? Because I know a few people that have got trips planned staying there. I'm going to be completely honest. It is definitely, definitely not my favourite. I'm As I got older and I hate the travelling more, I don't like the bigness of it. So my dad requests a, um, a room near a bus stop and near the food court. And it kind of ends up being the first stop. So we get on the bus first, obviously, as it goes around the entire resort. Then we're waiting 10 to 12 minutes before we then leave the resort, driving around all the other bus stops just to leave. And we're with a two-year-old who needs entertaining on a bus. So that's, you know, like 12 minutes of extra travel time every time we left to go somewhere. And then on the way back, it was okay because we had the first stop. So we did get off first. Mm -hmm. It just felt like... It felt quite far away from all of the parks because obviously we're right near the springs. So you can walk or get the boat to the springs, but every bus ride felt a bit longer than it should. I personally wouldn't choose to go again because, but it's obviously, the, it worked out money-wise for a group of us and the costs effective, obviously the two-bedroom villa and stuff. But I think it's nice as well going to different resorts to try them out. So again, if anyone wants to be like, oh, I've ticked that off my list, which is obviously what I did. No, that's a good good idea. So you had your chunk of Disney time and we'll come back and talk more about the Disney chunk later on because I, I, I just want to forward wind to the cruise. So mm-hmm. what ship were you on? What type of room did you get? And what was the itinerary? So we went on the Disney Dream and it was the three night one. I think it was called the three night Bahaman cruise. So it stopped at I'm sorry about my pronunciation, but I think it's Nassau or Nassau in Bahamas, Castaway Key, and then like straight back to Florida. So obviously it's just a three day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had to have two separate rooms for this one. So to help with the cost, I stayed with my sister and her boyfriend and the baby, because obviously then it's like three of us splitting the cost. Mm. And then my mum and dad had a separate room and we did all choose one with a veranda because when we were pricing it, The difference between the one with the balcony and the one without was it wasn't that much. And they just obviously wanted to experience one with a balcony. Mm. And so I, again, slept on one of the the pull down beds from the ceiling, which was actually quite comfy. Okay, And obviously the veranda gives you that opportunity just to have some sort of you time if anyone else in the room was getting changed. And also to have the benefit of having an early morning coffee on the veranda. Yeah, and I also, when I'd been with Luke, it was just the two of us, but we kind of utilised the um, curtain that's there, so it does split the room completely in half, it's just beyond the beds, so if you imagine the double bed, then the curtain, and then the actual drop-down bed from the ceiling, so overnight, I could literally close that, and then if I wanted to, you know, like, do my changing, or, like, I did my medication, or go on my phone a little bit, I felt like I was separating and not, like, waking them up or anything too much. Okay, so the dream three day cruise you went to castaway key how did you find the dream in comparison to the other cruises that you've done 
so I don't know what I got, but the fantasy has still been my favourite ship so far. And the dream is the sister ship to the fantasy because it's the other really big one. So it just felt like we had a lot to explore in a very short amount of time. So obviously mm. it is very similar in terms of style and how it looks and the layout. I still did the actual um, art of the theme show tour though, so I can like do one of each ship. And obviously each cast member has like different little like tidbits and secrets. So I still like doing that. Remind me, when is that tour offered? Uh, it's literally every day. So if you look on your um, personal navigator and it's for adults only, I think it. I think on the one we just went on, it was only on maybe once or twice. So we, mm-hmm. I had to really find out and like work my day around that. But when I went on my last cruise, I think it was on like once a day for like six days. Just kind of like highlight when you want to do it and when works best for you. Mm. And that, I suppose, is, is a great way to spend a sea day. Yeah, and it's just like, again, it's just one of those little interesting things. Like they point out stuff, you know, you wouldn't have noticed unless you'd gone on the tour. And again, it just brings that attention to detail. And like, it's an adults only one as well. So it's just like... It feels a bit more grown up and you're with one cast member who's giving you like lots of information. And obviously they live on this ship, so they literally know it inside out. And people have, you know, like random questions like, you know, about the waste of food or like just, you know, like general stuff. I, lo- I love them. They're like one of my top tips to do on the ships. I've added it to my top tip list of things I need to focus <laughs> on. That's brilliant. Thank uh-huh. you. So tell me a little bit about the food because... Disney, cruising, food, I hear it is sensational. So it was different as well this time. I'm, I'm a, I know it sounds weird, I'm a normal eater, but my sister, her partner and the baby are actually vegan. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we went, it's kind of like the my Disney experience app. The Disney Cruise Line have their own one. So I ticked that they was vegan. So they already knew before we went on the trip. The the thing that I think is the highlight of, for me, the food, is the dinners, because it's a sit-down dinner. Mm-hmm. So there's the whole thing of people are dressing up a little bit, and there's, um, you know, you get your proper little hardback book, and you have your starters, mains, and desserts, and you can choose whatever you want, if you don't like it, or you want more. Like, I had two puddings most nights, just so I can try <laughs> them, really. You're not going to do that anywhere else. And then, obviously, you get to know your person, and um, I just wanted, like, say, soda water, on the first night and then the second night he just like brought it along with us like oh just in case you want some later my sister was like did you even just ask for that I said no they remember they know that's amazing just tell me more about the vegan menus because my daughter's vegan and I know the challenges that we have when we go out oh my word it's like oh you can't have this or (laughs) this has got a bit of butter in how did Disney cope with that so the dinner, to me, was quite easy. Obviously, you have your server and your assistant server. They said the first night about being vegan, and he knew that someone on the table was, but obviously didn't know who. Mm-hmm. So he basically pointed out what they, once they described the vegan was obviously not vegetarian, it's a lot stricter. Mm. He was saying what they can and can't have, but it's the little one who's two. She's actually quite fussy. So they went and made a special meal of her of just like, she doesn't like sauces or anything. So she just literally had plain spaghetti with like peas and sweet corn and like her own little bowl of rice. So she like literally got stuck in and uh, next night actually on the menu was um, tofu. Mm -hmm. So he was like, this is vegan. You can actually have this. And then he actually had them got them a special curry made like he was like do you like curry I can get something done for you so he then put in the order for the next night so it was a bit more quicker on the second night you know like once you've got into Mm. speaking to them and them knowing you and like so they had this whole massive tofu big meal and then he came out with this curry for them as well on the mornings we did it slightly differently when me and Luke had been we've just gone to Cabana's like the buffet but I think he said like it wouldn't be as easy because you have to speak to someone so we went and had sit down breakfast but the waiter put in the order for the next morning so they actually had like um, special vegan pancakes made and then obviously there was like fruit they could eat and then they had when we got to the table they went and got them the special butter and then soya milk which they brought to the table for them it wasn't obviously like out like normal but I think they were really well like catered for considering it is to me like quite a difficult Mm. one to work around really 
Mm, it is a quite challenging set of restrictions that you can't have when you start thinking because I know a lot of the vegetarian options tend to have some dairy in or butter or some you know something that would make it unsuitable for a vegan yeah like they said like it's like Disney's one of the places where they actually kind of do eat the best um I think the daytimes was a little bit harder because it's more casual food and you've got to go and find someone so like if say if you want I could easily go and get you like a sandwich or a hot dog because there's all like the soft like just you know quick serve food almost on one of the top decks but I think it's there then they struggled because they didn't have as much but sit down meals to me were like they were I think they were well done no that sounds absolutely fab I'm really pleased about that that's something that a lot of people who have dietary con- concerns will ask about the cruises and I'm, I'm sure it's great to know that Disney are, are just as accommodating for the cruise ships as they are in the theme parks yeah, I think like, you know, that because obviously if you had gone on a week one, like they're going to definitely know by, you know, day two, day three, how it's going to work. So even if it was on the short one, they were like, they were looked after, but it was just stuff like, obviously when you have your, um, you come back to your room and it's made up, you actually have a gear and dilly's milk chocolate left on your bed, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't eat that. So they just gave them all to me. But I was like, I don't think they would go that far as to get special chocolates for people's pillows because I don't think there'll be that many vegans for them to order them in Hmm. and obviously that's just like a little treat rather than a necessary thing true true and who'd eat the the chocolates anyway you'd be bringing them home if you're anything like me I took loads of them because obviously they gave me all that fantastic what about entertainment on the ship what did you manage to keep yourself busy with so this ship it was newly released Beauty and the Beast they'd re- uh, I don't know how to describe it. They said they revamped it more after the film that had just come out. Mm-hmm. So that was like the big blockbuster thing that they were telling everyone to see. And they were actually saying it was so popular they put it on two nights out of the three. Wow. So people definitely got a chance to see it and wasn't so restricted to that one viewing. On the third evening, it was one of the shows I'd actually seen on the fantasy, I think. But I still went and saw it. Like, it's still a Disney show. Mm. And then obviously during the day... We only popped off to Nassau for maybe two hours. Castaway Kiwi was off the ship all day. Mm-hmm. As I said, I went on the tour. Like we did the, um, we did the game. I now have completely forgot what it's called with the special cards, and it's all like interactive with the paintings. Oh, is that the midship detective agency? Yeah, that's the one. I was like, you guys have to play this. So the last evening, we were like running around the ship like crazy people because we wanted to finish it. And then uh, we watched the Goodbye Show or See You Real Soon show on the last evening, which is all the characters. We didn't actually meet any characters because, again, like we had technically like what felt like two and a half days and we want to see the ship. And then they took the little one to like the Nemo pool. And then I was like, we need to see the show. We need to go to dinner. And I felt I obviously didn't mind too much because I had done a week. But I think a three day one with a family for your first one is like a little bit too much. Hmm. Too short? Yeah, because obviously everyone wants to do something. Like Infinity War was actually on at the cinema. So mm-hmm. my sister's boyfriend wanted to see it, but obviously it's like a two an hour bit film. And then the way it fell, he would have like say missed one of the shows or had to go to like dinner at a different time, which you don't really do. And then obviously he wants to see the baby, so it was like, Oh, I can't go and see it. Oh, such a shame. I know. That's why the weak ones are good. Mm. do you think your parents will go again I'm not sure like I think so I don't know if my mum enjoyed it though she said that it was just too busy it felt like too many people Mm. but obviously because we was traveling as a group and one of the group was two years old we didn't really spend any time in the adults only areas which obviously is much more chilled and more quiet so we was in the like the noisy family areas quite a bit and I think that like I never spend time there when I've gone on the other so I feel like it takes it away a little bit and you don't see the other side of it and obviously when we walk through I was like look this is the adults bit this is the nice bit okay this is why I'm here I'm here for like the cocktails and stuff so I don't know if they would I think I think my dad and my sister's boyfriend quite liked it again it's just that whole costing and where you'd want to go and if you want to, like, give it up and go to Disney or go to Disney instead. Because, obviously, with a two-year-old, I think Disney World might be a bit better than the cruise. Hmm. 
I think I think she liked it. I taught her cruise ship while we were on it, so she kept saying cruise ship. Oh, bless. What else would you recommend to anybody who's thinking about going on a cruise? The cup thing still gets me. So obviously, if you've been to a Disney resort, you get given the plastic cup and you can go and fill your drinks up as much as you want. But on the ship, there's just a couple of like stations and they give you, you know, like the little plastic cups. So like, mm. And I'm talking re- like half of a, if you imagine a regular size plastic one, it's literally half of that. So by the time, say, you filled it up with, you know, like your water or your soft drink or your iced tea, you've kind of drunk half of it. And then they ask you not to reuse it, but get a whole new cup again. So on the first cruise, Luke actually bought me like a, you know, like one of those insulated flasks. So it keeps your hot drinks hot mm. and your cold drinks cold. And then I just used that to kind of top up with. And obviously, if you want tea or coffee, and it just felt a bit more like environmentally friendly rather than just using tons and tons of cup. Also, the second trip I had, I had bad weather. So take a hoodie or something warm because obviously the top decks were super windy. And I don't know why. I feel like the air conditioning is like super high. As soon as you come out your room, those halls and the restaurants where you eat, they do get quite chilly. And I know it wasn't just me because I like obviously with our table mates and stuff, people was it was like a thing we were talking about was how cold it was. If you're an adult only and you have a bit of extra cash, do the Paolo brunch. It's thirty dollars and it's amazing. Like I regret doing the dinner on the first one now instead of the brunch. The brunch was just so good. Okay, tell me about the brunch because it's it's on my to do list and I'm quavering whether I should. So sell it to me, Becky. So we booked it. They only offer it at Days at Sea, which I did not realise. Um, so it doesn't even feel like you're like wasting any time or anything because you're just there. They give you a two-hour slot of like just they said this is your table. Like don't feel you need to rush. You get given like a hard you know menu with all of these food on, and then I was like you know kind of sitting down. I had, we each had a free Bellini by the way included. So it's like ten thirty in the morning, and we're like, mm, why not? And you have to dress up as well. So I'm like in this dress. I'm a little bad. 10.30. I think it was like a Sunday morning. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, no, don't order yet. I've got to go and show you the food stations. Wow. Like, what? So he's like, come over me. And takes you on like almost like a tour of the food. So the first one was, you know, like stuff like the cheeses and the hams and like, the, you know, like antipasti and all like that stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. Then you like kind of you turn around and there was like a little seafood kind of shot thing and then all this fish and like caviar and all this stuff. Then it takes us around the corner and it's all like the pastry stuff. So there was like, you know, like the sticky buns and there was like chocolate croissants and like all of this, like, you know, just goodiness. Then it takes us to a little like bar and there was like a whole wheel, you know, like the ginormous pieces of cheese of like, Mm. It's literally huge. I swear it would have weighed the same amount as me. And then you can have a little sh- like pot that you put honey with it, which was like proper freshly done, or like some other kind of jam. And he was like, try your cheese with both of these. And then it was all these other cheeses. And obviously he was like, oh, you're from Europe, so your palate's probably a bit different to the Americans anyway. But it was like all these freshly like grated cheeses that you could try. And then you're like, oh, my God, I'm a fool and I haven't even eaten. He was like, oh, one more bit. It takes you to another little section, which is all the puddings. So it was like chocolate covered strawberries and like coffee mousses, and like pistachio this and like other puddings. And he was like, we have a rule here. You have to eat at least four puddings. You can, you can do this. <laughs> and I was like, I have a sweet tooth. I will try four puddings. Then so obviously we look at all this, takes us back to our table and it's like, and then, obviously, you can go back and forth to all these stations as much as you want. You know, like, eat what you want, take your time. And then this menu, which obviously had all this food on, what would you like from this? I was like, we, we have both? He was like, yeah. So it's like half buffet, half sit down. So I think we both chose Eggs Benedict with salmon. And then we did all the kind of the beginning stuff, with like the ham and the cheeses and a few like bready bits. Then we had the Eggs Benedict and then went back to the pudding and then we had coffee and I thought I was going to burst. Oh. Yeah. And it's like adults only and everyone was like kind of dressed up and it felt really chilled. And it was obviously it's all like themed to like the Italians and it was just like it was so nice. I, if I went on another like week long one, I think I would do it again. So bearing in mind, you've also done the California Grill brunch on this last trip. How yeah. would you rank the Paolo brunch with that? To me, that was so similar. I think the Paolo 
has done really well and that's why they're trying it out at California Grill Mm -hmm. because again you get given a menu with like hot food but then there's all the different stations which again you can go back and forth and try out and then still have the hot thing and it's like it just felt it feels like nice and like a bit more like luxury Disney rather than you're like rush get some waffles and get out Mm. so to me they were like I think I obviously prefer Paolo because I don't know like obviously you're on a ship and I booked it for our first morning and it was like sunny and I could see the sea and Mm. it was like the first time I'd experienced that type of thing but then I went to California Grill and was like this is just like Paolo dad you would love it (laughs) so I think wherever you're on if you book one or the other you've, you've kind of you've tried one and then you know if you like that to book the other one obviously if you're lucky enough to do both experiences i do think the california grill was more expensive than 30 dollars so mm. but we was on the dining plan so i think it used up two credits and then obviously you had to pay the tip but i think that had a set price but it, it definitely was more than 30 dollars yeah i think it's 80 dollars that seems to stick in my head and then you've got your gratuity etc yeah, so like yeah big price difference yeah yeah, I'll be a <laughs> So yeah, uh, Paolo brunch over dinner any day on the ship. So while we're talking about cruise ships, you've now done three of the tr- cruise ships. Mm-hmm. How are you going to stick in the last one? I booked another cruise on my last cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, tell us the details. So when you're on a cruise, there's a special deal on if you book another cruise while you're on board, which is what I wish I'd done other times. Um, if it's a seven day or longer one, I think you get $200 stateroom credit, get reduced deposit and 10% off. Wow. I'm, I'm only doing a five day one. So I think I'm getting $100 stateroom credit. And then I didn't get the reduced deposit, but I did get 10% off. Okay, so what, what what's the itinerary? I'm going from Miami it seemed to be cheaper than Port Canaveral Mm -hmm. and it's I think it's another Bahamas one so it's Miami, Key West, Nassau, Castaway Key, Day at Sea and then back so it's a five night one. Fantastic so when do you hop on that one? That's not until February next year but like the lady said of when you book it on board basically you're entering into agreement of saying you are going to take another cruise within the next two years, I think. Mm -hmm. So she said, even if, because obviously I couldn't look at flights or prices because I'm on a ship with no internet whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So she was like, if you can't get a fly or it's just not worked out like money wise, you can actually change it for like free. You just have to do it within a certain, like from the day I booked it, it has to take within two years within that point. Okay. So obviously it's just kind of like a mini travel agent. So I sat down with her and obviously was like looking and stuff. You see, you're tempting me to start looking at some itineraries now to be pre-empting booking on the cruise ship. Yeah, like I know they said um, don't do it on the last day because everyone decides, oh, they really like the cruise and that's when Mm. they start going to the travel agents because we should have looked on the first one. We went really to go on the second one because we went on it a year, but we didn't go again just we didn't get around to it because we was just you know doing stuff and like had new friends and had things going on moving away from the cruise and congrats on booking another one thank you i've not actually really told anyone yet (laughs) well the law (laughs) knows what did you see as your highlights when you're in walt disney world so i did really like the brunch at california grill because again we had that on the first morning and it just felt just super nice and obviously it's the first morning so you're super excited because you've still got like two weeks obviously sunny and hot I, I liked the tour I did but it wasn't my favorite because I did um the caring for giants one I booked it for everyone's Christmas present okay so I did that one but I like I think I like learning more about the actual parks themselves mm. where obviously this is kind of all about the elephants and how they look after them, which is still nice because obviously you still see it from like a different point of view like on the other side of the safaris oh, i'm trying to think of what here you're like oh we just did like loads but it kind of all just merges doesn't it mm. like once you get back what did the family think to pandora oh yeah I went on that again like three more times <laughs> yeah they all really enjoyed it um we <laughs> I was very lucky because it was with a child, obviously. I'd already done fast passes for us all. But then, obviously, um, she couldn't go on it because she's, like, too tiny. So we actually had a child swap, Mm -hmm. which made one of us got to go on again, which then was me. (laughs) Because I was like, I'll do it if no one wants to. 
because obviously I think we'd eaten or something and my dad was like, oh, well, I'll just like sit down because I think she started napping so we all took turns. They all loved it. Like, I knew they would. It's something you can't really not enjoy, can you? True. I don't know. It's just amazing. And then because um, we had so much, obviously we left our stuff at Saratoga while we went to the cruise. So we didn't have to have two separate bookings for the hotel. And then we left most of our stuff there. So we just took a small case. Mm -hmm. So we had like three days spare of like food um, dining plans and my sister as we were like queuing up there was an English family one of the girls was like quite like heavily disabled and she was obviously like what's it like do you think she'll like it and we were all trying to be like it's like soaring but you know like plus plus and she was like oh she loved that and then after I had to go and find her and I was like did she like it and she was like oh she absolutely loved it. My sister was like, I want to do a magic moment. I want to do something for them. They're not wearing magic bands. So clearly not on Disney. It's obviously like a really big holiday for them. Hmm. So I know it sounds really creepy, but I kind of like watched where they went. And my sister ran ahead and went to the Pongo Pongo and bought the really disabled girl and her sister a, um, a night blossom drink. Hmm. obviously without the alcohol and then like obviously I was waving at her and she came over and like gave the drinks to the mom and dad I was like just in case she's not allowed but we've got them a drink each oh my god it was so sweet oh I was almost like oh my god oh my god and then the dad was like oh oh that's so nice of you like that's really nice that's really sweet and Kirsty was like obviously it's like the drink to drink while you're in Pandora but we just thought you could like all do with like a little treat and they were like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Oh, that's amazing, Becky. These magic moments sometimes just really make your holidays, don't they? Oh, and then, like, we went and told my mum and dad, and um, we were all sitting on a wall, and then, like, we saw them walk past the drinks, and they were like, thank you again, have a good day. Oh. Yeah. Oh, was that's sweet. so special. Getting all emotional now, just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you managed to squeeze in on this trip that you really loved? I know we've touched on eating at California Grill and doing the brunch there. Oh, what else did we do? We did quite a few new restaurants just randomly. So we was in Epcot and we went to, where did I say we went to? You know that Japanese one that you said you're going to? Tokyo Dining. Is that the one that's in the same building as Teppanedo? Yes. Yeah, so obviously them being vegan, they follow um, Vegan Disney World on Instagram and she goes to all the places and says what she eats and what she likes. Mm -hmm. So my sister just literally every day was like, I want to try this, I want to try this. So we went there because they did sushi, you know, like a vegetable one. She literally booked it like an hour before when we were walking around World Showcase and I had a sake margarita with my lunch. Ooh, was that tasty? It was. I couldn't finish it because it was like... I don't know, it was strong, but it was also like so much ice. And I had this massive, did I send you the picture of the bento box? No. Again, that was all included uh, for the dining plan. So you know, you're like, we're all just like, and the drinks are included as well now, aren't they? Yeah. So like we had a really nice lunch. And then I think we stayed in Epcot for the rest of the day. And then we went to the Garden Grill for dinner, which now and I have also been to before. We were talking just... about that on last week's show, and we were, we were sort of saying how kind of fun it is that everything's served family style. What did you guys think to it? So they had their own salad, because there was something in our one. Then they had the rolls with special butter, and then I think they had their own meal. But I can't remember what they had now. But basically, we all... It wasn't my favourite, but I'm now glad I've got to experience it. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. It just felt quite casual. And I, sometimes I hate the planning of it too much. And it just mm. was nice that that one day, like, soaring was 20 minutes. Wow. So we went on it. I don't know what was happening in the first week, but it was quite nice. I tried another different margarita from La Cava del Tequila, which is always good. Um... Uh, I saw Illuminations the second week, just in case it does end, as the rumours are saying. Oh, please, not until after my trip. Uh, you know, there's all new hoarding up around the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, so I took a picture which may or may not be the new wall, apparently. Ooh. Yeah, I was, like, really heavily into my photos this year, so I was like, Mum, take a picture of me by the bubblegum wall, <laughs> and now this wall, and now this one. I had purple walls, got a new bit, so I have to go here. Literally, I had a list of, like, places I wanted to do. To see those pictures, it's what underscore Becky underscore did on Instagram. 
Thank you. Yeah, I had uh, fun with my uh, photo shoots. Oh, also, I was there the day that the parade caught fire. You did because you sent you sent me messages of the parade and telling me what was happening. Oh my god, what was that like? So me and my mum, it was just me and my mum that day because they'd gone to a water park and we was eating. Where was I? I think it was in Peco Bills, and then we came out and. Um, I was like, oh, we should have ate outside. We could have seen the parade. And then, obviously, we'd already sat down. I was halfway through eating. And then we came out, and there was all these cast members, like, basically in a line just going, no, you can't go through. And then the Mickey and Minnie balloon, you know, the one they stand in, Mickey and Minnie wasn't in it, and the balloon was deflated, but it was coming backwards towards Splash Mountain. And I was like, Mum, something has happened. This is not normal. And you know, you're like, huh, this is strange. So my mum goes and asks the cast member what happened, and the girl goes, oh, I don't know. And you're like, she, I was like, can we just stand around and be nosy, you know, mm-hmm. just see what's going to happen? Like, we're here. And then um, they literally, all of these cast members, literally from everywhere, all over the park, just, like, stood and blocked everyone and stopped them going across and just, bring, like, brung the floats back. And I was like, strange, I'm going online. So you like get my Wi-Fi, and I went straight on Facebook, and the first thing that comes up to obviously like loads of Disney groups was like that Maleficent float on fire, and I was like, oh my god, mum, look at this! Turns out it was just right round the corner in Liberty Square, so they then shut off Liberty Square completely, and we had we got like redirected through into say you know where the toilets are by into Adventureland. Hmm. So obviously that was like super busy down there. They were giving out people bottles of water, but we just got on, so we said no obviously everyone was like talking about it and we were like just hanging around in adventure land and there was two guy cast members and someone was like oh this is gonna be everywhere already and i was like it is it's literally all over facebook and instagram and twitter it is everywhere he was like yeah well it's gonna happen nowadays isn't it so then we um i think we went back into country bears and then walked along and then they kind of cut off that bit by you know where the christmas shop and sleepy hollow is hmm. they were actually like hosing down the floor so i was like maybe it was like scorched or something so that bit was still shut off for a little bit and then i was just like i was so close but i didn't see it but i was there when it happened next thing you'll know they'll be selling badges on ebay i was there wonderful well, as we mentioned, we people can find you on Instagram and also your blog where you're talking and sharing details about all your amazing Disney travels that you go on. So please do check out Becky. She is a real travel bug and she loves to go all over the place and document her trips. Thank you. And my lovely, I hope to catch up with you more real, real soon. Thank you. See ya. And that's wrapping up this week's Disney Dream Girls. So I'm afraid it is a goodbye from me.